Good evening. Tonight is August 22nd, 2023. I always laugh because I can't believe it's whatever month it is, but it's August of 2023. I'm Glenda Carlin. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Holy Son of God, Leon. Holy Son of God, Barbie. Holy Son of God, Edward. Holy Son of God, Nance. Holy Son of God, Angela. Holy Son of God, Jerry. Holy Son of God, Alvaro. Holy Son of God, Julia. Holy Son of God, Glenda. And my um, uh, Zoom is, is doing different things here. So I got to watch on the side to admit people. It's not doing its normal thing where it says a name and then you admit one person at a time. It's doing some different stuff. <laughs> and that's part of my talk tonight to be in the now. What's going on right now? <laughs> uh, but anyway, and we want to invite in Holy Spirit. Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters, be here, help us, guide us with understanding, insights, and just plain have fun. Guide me what to do or say. Thank you, thank you, thank you for letting us be in this wonderful meeting. And thank you for whoever invented Zoom. Uh, we're all, all over the country. And people then can, when I record this and post it, people like all kinds of places Ireland, Shabon is in Ireland, uh, South America. People join up with us. Canada, Canada, of course. People are here even live from Canada. So thank you, thank you. And thank Helen Schuchman, Bill Theffer for A Course in Miracles. Thank you, Buddha, for Dzogchen Buddhism. Um, Gary Renard for his books. Thank you, thank you, each of you for being, being here and uh, wanting to awaken from the dream from this and it's a dream because it's not this this is, in the relative it looks like there's a world and we're a form and we never put the body in harm's way but in the absolute there's only spirit this divine god light that's animating every form here and animates everything, or it wouldn't be moving around in this physical world. Um, and hallelujah that the living God, the living Tao, the living force, whatever you want to call it, the, it's, Muslims call it something, Hindus call it something, you know, everybody's got a different name for it, but it's not, it's beyond name. It's the infinite. Um, it's beyond oneness called not two in Buddhism, because to have two is subject object. So not two, because there's only God. There's only God. What's different is we're not awake and aware to it. We've fallen asleep and thinking we're a form, a body. But we can wake up from the dream, the seeming separation from God in moments called holy instance during the day. And you keep practicing, practicing. And this builds on itself by practicing Jesus's advanced forgiveness. And, you know, preparing for this talk tonight, I found the paragraph. It's in work. It's workbook 158. Uh about where describing advanced forgiveness, but it also talks about Christ's vision. Because tonight I'm going, my topic of discussion is how does it feel to have accomplished mind, the mind training that Jesus teaches in the course? And how does it feel when you have a free Christ Buddha mind unplugged from ego? What's that feel like? And I found a paragraph, uh, it's lesson 162, where Jesus says, uh, Christ's vision has restored your sight by salvaging your mind. And I, I looked up what the word salvage means. It means rescue. So Christ's vision restores your sight by rescuing your mind from this dream of separation and listen to these egoic thoughts, which are thoughts of separation. But tonight I'm talking about Christ's vision the thing that the Course of Miracles talks about mind training. That's what we're doing. We're doing all these lessons and practicing these other truths. And a quote from this holy one called Sarara, S-A-R-A-H-A -A -A from Buddhism. 
um, that talks about how to allow the mind, mind. See what we're doing by mind training, Jesus and I find in the in my uh, email, I wrote and found the things where Jesus talks about mind. I want to see that. Uh, this is a course in mind training. <laughs> That's chapter one, uh, section seven, course in mind training. And then it's in a workbook lesson 44. God is the light in which I see. In order to see, you must recognize that, the, that light is within, not without. You do not see outside yourself, nor does the equipment for seeing outside of you. An essential part of this equipment is the light. See this light, this clear light that's here, that's activating your form. That's what's essential to have Christ's vision. You tap into that once in a while as you wake up. You can tap into it hundreds, if not thousands of time before full awakening and full enlightenment. But anyway, uh, it is with you, this light is with you always making vision possible in every circumstance. Um, it's, and, but he says it's particularly difficult to do this with an undisciplined mind. Uh, let's see what else he says. And represents a major goal of mind training. It requires precisely what the untrained, untrained mind lacks. Yet this training must be accomplished if you are to see. That's workbook lesson 44. Um, then there's another one, workbook lesson 95, where Jesus says, I am one self united with my creator. It is difficult at this point not to allow your mind to wander. And it, if it undertakes extended practice, you've surely realized this by now. You have seen the extent of your lack of mental discipline and of your need for mind training. It is necessary that you be aware of this, for it is indeed a tolerant, a hindrance to your advance. That's workbook lesson 95. And when I look back on my awakening without meditation and a particular kind called sky gazing meditation, space mingling, and ah, AH meditation that Dzogchen Buddhism teaches. You're, I wasn't aware of how the mind operates, the nature of mind, and that's mind training. And, you know, I have people in A Course in Miracles tell me they really fight this about meditating. And But if you look at a, all, many of these lessons, Jesus will say, just, you know, lean back and um, and try not to have a, 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 a observe your thoughts. He'll have you watch your thoughts. Well, what he's having you do is meditate. Because in meditation, we're observing thoughts and feelings and letting them come and go without repressing them. And I wrote in the email to you all that before Zochin and before learning about this meditation, and I did this myself in A Course in Miracles, I thought the body was bad. It was a symbol of ego and feelings were bad and good and, I, and hate and love. But that's simply not true. All these thoughts and feelings and images are completely filled with the light of God. They're completely holy, completely holy. Everything's holy. It's my judgment that judges them good and bad. Now, of course, due to thoughts, uh, uh, cause and effect and actions and reactions, we cause karma and misuse the force to actually do uh, un- you know, what's uh, called uh, spiritual practices, ethical choices of not harming and killing things, etc. There's ethical choices we make, but that's still the creative light of God that we're that people are using even when they miscreate. Behind it is the power of God. So you practicing the course and me also practicing Zochim Buddhism beside the course. You learn to train this mind to be aware of what the heck it's doing. But anyway, um, so um, what can't, what the topic of the thing is, how do you, how does it feel to have a free Christ mind unplugged from ego? And I wrote you in the email that I really didn't know what enlightened living would feel like or be like, I had it, I had it judged incorrectly. 
<laughs> because what happens is, and I'll be going through certain things here, is the heart opens, the heart opens to have love, compassion, and empathy for your brothers. We can't help, we can't cause them to wake up, but our brother is our savior. And we also can save our brother in that we practice this advanced forgiveness, this uh, looking at beyond their body to the spirit they are. And our light and love touches their light and love unbeknownst to them and help and and helps them awaken. That's why in Dzogchen Buddhism, one of the main things about meditation is we dedicate the merit of any peaceful mind, calming benefit insights to the benefit of all beings to help them wake up from the dream of separation. We're no longer in this for me, me, me. We're in this for the service of others, helping others how we think of our brothers. But I want to get tell you about this law of one we're about where you look for Christ's vision is lesson 158, which I'm talking about tonight is Christ's vision. How do you see with this trained, this trained Christ mind where you've unveiled your Christ awareness, your Buddha awakened awareness, you've opened your heart, your Buddha, Christ heart, God heart, you've awakened your mind to all these truths and ethical practices that I'll be discussing and powers of reality of, of God world, of God life, God living. And all these chakras open up and light centers. You will be are a light being. You are the light of the world. This is a transformative practice that A Course in Miracles is and Zotin Buddhism is. And it's awakening your mind, opening your heart, to this and ultimately you have this Christ vision where you look out and there's only this clear light of God mind and in it you see that every all of these are projections that are coming and going in that light everything's included in that God mind there's nothing but God mind all the projections are coming and going are animated by that light there's and they're interconnected they're interwoven by the light the, the light doesn't stop at my shoulders or at my head or at your heads. The light is continuous. And here's what Jesus says. Christ's vision has one law. It does not look upon a body and mistake it for the son whom God created. This is what I talk to you about all the time every week. But I've forgotten this lesson, 158. It beholds a light beyond the body an idea beyond what can be touched, a purity undimmed by errors, pitiful mistakes, and fearful thoughts of guilt from dreams of sin. It sees no separation, and it looks on everyone, on every circumstance, all happenings, and all events, without the slightest fading of the light it sees, 158. And so, when, look what Jesus says. He looks on everyone, on every circumstance, all happenings, all events, without the slightest fading of the light. He, it sees. When my judgment of enlightenment was that, I don't know, it's just going to be light. It wasn't that I was going to have an awakened, that Glenda was going to have an embody the Christ, Buddha, the spiritual truths. I had no idea that would happen. The mind... Uh, is transformed it's reborn into this law of love and empathy compassion and all these truths and it automatically thinks this way because it's thinking holy because it's awakened to its holiness to every circumstance every event every person you embody it you live it you're walking around living this so then what happens i realize is all the senses get awakened, heightened to this Christ, Buddha, this high, uh, high awareness called awakened awareness. Holy, holy Christ, Buddha, awareness. your taste, your smell, your sight goes to that, you know, Christ vision. But hearing, your hearing and the mind is a sense. It's thinking, but it's thinking these spiritual truths on these wisdoms that we I've talked about two weeks ago. 
all I never ever thought about my feelings would get uh, heightened, my uh, sense of touch. Never, ever, ever would I have thought this, folks. But what happens is you are dancing with this life, this physical world, while being aware of your this G, uh, God light, this clear light. Because you have this Christ vision, Buddha vision. You see this clear light. It's everywhere. It's, it's all there is. And God is all there is. But when you're what well, I realize when I'm watching TV, I now, uh, it's called a freedom. What happens is the mind gets free. You have a, you've mastered this mind training. You're mastered this mind and you're aware of, of, of this rest, this clear light. You're aware of the mind can wander around, wander. Like I wander around looking at Nance, looking at Angela, looking at Alvaro's word, Barbie. I've allowed my mind to wander and look at your forms, but it's awake. I'm aware I'm doing this. I choose to wander, let the mind wander while I'm knowing there's the Christ light that's here. And I'm enjoying your forms. I'm enjoying whatever I'm saying, you know, whatever this beingness is. It's it's a heightened awareness of beingness with you that's interconnected but i'm it's a feeling you i'm feeling this uh, loving thoughts towards you everything's opened up opened up heightened to sensations sensory experiences and and in my email um i i emailed you there was a post which helped me understand this and I'm just going to read this because see with mind training you're going to you're mastering your mind you allow it to wander it's no longer sleepwalking and on its own just doing whatever the hell it wants you're choosing what it's going to do you can you know experience tasting watermelon experience whatever you're doing walking with nature touching the dew on moss and you're you're perfectly in the moment, in the now, enjoying the sense of touching moss, your sight of seeing that do, but seeing that you're interconnected and one. You're one with all these images, even though they're apparitions, dream figures, they're animated by that God light. You're interwoven with it, interconnected as one, but you have this joy. You're living in a joyous state. And this living God, this living Tao, this living force, it's living, it's living, it's ecstatic, it's loving, joyous, it's just unbelievably loving and joyous and ecstatic and forever creating, forever nonstop creating, making Im and making images, making feelings, that's what it does. But I didn't understand that I was wanting to start. Uh, label things good and bad, re attach to things and push things away. That's not in, in awakened living, enlightened living. You're letting things come and go. You're in this flow. You're in this flow. R remembering you're completely aware you're this light, but you're enjoying every person you're around. You're awake and alert with every encounter. And then with that encounter, you're practicing Jesus's advanced forgiveness, where you're thinking of that person as spirit and not that body. Plus, I've been reading that Buddha is as Buddha does book. And that Surya Das talks about picture every encounter. See, he doesn't talk about this advanced forgiveness, but he wants you to think about opening your heart like a rose or a lotus. And see that what he's wanting you to get to is this love that I constantly talk to you about silently saying, I love you to whatever shows up in front of your face or to images in your mind, because that's the, your inheritance. That's your really essence is this love light, this clear light, but it's stuff full of love. But anyway, it, when you encounter somebody, uh, stop and just picture your heart opens like a rose, let it open or a lotus. 
And see, that lets you relax and surrender into this higher Christ, Buddha, God nature of love. It's just marvelous. It's because you want to feel that love. Anyway, so this, what, what this mind trading is having you do is to allow you to master the mind where you can let it wander or rest. It's called rest the light, rest in the light. Rest in this clear light, rest in this essence of God. Where you in meditation, that's when you've brought your attention back to the vertical center and you just rest there. You lean back and you rest. And then before you know it, the mind wanders. Well, that's in meditation. You're learning how it works to you keep bringing your attention back to this vertical now, 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 over and over and over. And you're building a spiritual muscle till all these things um awakened mind opened heart uh all the, all the light centers open and you, and all these truths then generalize and you're experiencing this total enlightened way of living where you embody you embody all these christ buddha qualities here's this post from this this holy tibetan being called s-a-r-a-h-a this is talking about how to rest the mind, about the mind, how the mind works. And then if you listen to this YouTube video again, see every time you listen to it, see I, I printed this out on a piece of paper. I found the post on that Surya Das's website. I put it on a piece of paper. I carry it around. And one of the things about the five wisdoms, I've mauled it around so much, I'm gonna have to reprint it on another piece of paper. Because I carry it when I walk, I sit by my chair. And what you do, you're contemplating these things to a deep level and asking Holy Spirit to help you. But this is how the mind works. The way to rest the mind should be neither too intense nor too relaxed. See, that's what you're learning in mind training. You're not too intense or too relaxed. I'm just going to read this. Let the mind rest with clarity and without distraction. See, that's attachment and aversion. Like a lamp on a windless night. Let the mind wander to various objects with awareness. Like a bird set free from a ship at sea. Regard whatever arises in the mind as part of Mahamudra. That just means the mind, how the mind works. Like the flying flames of a forest fire. See, if you got a forest, well, guess what's going to happen? It's going to get a fox some flames, right? You don't fight it. There's flames in the forest. Now, granted, you, you, you go to safety, do whatever you need to do. But he's just talking about this natural way of this mind activity. And regard all sensory impressions as part of meditation. See, used to, I would have, avoid them. I would avoid my feelings, avoid sense of smell, taste, sight, hearing, call it judging it, call it good and bad. Regard all sensory impressions as part of meditation, like reflections of the moon on water. See, all these feelings and thoughts are simply minds, clear light radiance man manifesting these images. That's all it is and filling them with light. They're like reflections of the moon on water. A yogi, which is you, people that are awakening, allows the mind to wander and rest with ease, like a skillful elephant herder looks after his elephants. A yogi should delight in sensory experiences, just as fields rely on water and manure. Now, man, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but if you sit with that, the, the yogi allows the mind to wander. So when I'm watching TV, I'm telling myself, oh, I'm going to allow myself to watch this movie. And I'm watching that activity in that movie. I'm one, letting the mind wander and look at all those objects and enjoy that movie. Once in a while, I'll, I'll come back off it and go, oh, yeah, that's clear like that spirit. Then I go back, wah, I let it wander. But I'm choosing to let my mind wander. I'm not sleepwalking. 
Other times I'll lean back when I'm watching the movie, I'll lean back, go to that vertical space of spirit and light, clear light. And I rest. I rest with my eyes open. I rest there. The clear light is just vibrating and radiating simultaneously, um, reabsorbing simultaneously all at once, back and forth, back and forth as I watch the movie. But I'm resting in the light. I'm got mastering the mind where I can choose to do this. The mind's no longer telling me what the hell to do. Because during the day, remember other weeks, I talk about ask yourself, it's called, uh, what's it called? I forget. Um, there's a, uh, I forget there's a word for it. Where you're asking yourself, am I dreaming or, I'm, or uh, am I awake? Who's watching this? Who's looking at this? You're asking yourself this because if we're not careful, 100% of the time, we're just walking around with habitual thoughts, habitual habits, habitual way of doing things, not with mindfulness, not with awareness, awakened awareness, the mind's running the show. And then, But I love how this says, a yogi allows the mind to wander and rest with ease like a skillful elephant herder looks after his elephants. So I sat there in my chair and thought about, pictured myself as this elephant herder. So I'm elephant herder and there's these huge elephants. I'm the elephant herder. Well, see what that's doing is presenting these thoughts and feelings that are in your mind are elephants. They're huge elephants. They're moving around, they're elephants. But who's skillful enough to herd them? <laughs> the elephant herder, if you're skillful. So I pictured the elephant herder, I pictured him. He's just walking with the elephants. The elephants are deciding where they're going to go eat some grass or whatever they eat, or they're going to lay down and rest. He just tending them. He just tending them, the elephants. And, but also he might be silent. It was real whispering to them gently, or might be gently touching them, you know, trying to, you know, Oh, let's go this way. Or maybe not. He's letting them be. See, in our mind with meditation, we're letting things be, letting things come and go. But the, the skillful, like a skillful, we're becoming like a skillful elephant herder looking after his elephants. We're becoming skillful at looking at, after the nature of mind, what our mind is doing. It's just so uh, contemplative, so uh, deep so deep for you to become aware of what your mind's doing. And the last one about you delight in sensory perceptions before I wasn't. Okay, and that's gonna bring me to this whole thing about what it's like to live in an enlightened way is you're aware of your thoughts and feelings. So I walk each morning and each evening, if it's not lightning, <laughs> I'll walk even when it rains, but not when it's lightning. <laughs> um, and I forget it when this was Friday. It's in my email. I was out walking, but I got, now this is pretty graphic. <laughs> but see, I've realized Holy Spirit had to work with me a certain way. Because how is he going to get me to turn around when I was walking? Because when I walk, I tend to go one of two directions away from my house and I have my iPhone watch on and I'm, I'm getting my two mile, a mile out and I'll come back a mile so I can get my two miles in morning and evening or whatever I get in. But how is Holy Spirit going to get my attention to turn me around? Because he needed me to get back to my house. So the thought came to me, I needed to turn around. I'm not kidding you. Because it, I might need to go poop. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> that has never happened before. And I thought, well, that's an odd deal. But I thought, well, I'm used to listening to my thoughts. I damn turned around. I turned around, started walking back to my house. And I came to one of these side streets. And I kind of sensed how my body was. I thought, well, I can pull off maybe going down this side street a little bit. I went down the side street and I got the thought again. Boy, you better head back home. You might need to poop. <laughs> this is really funny to me. So I head back home, folks. 
I get back in front of my house, my property's out in the country. And when I would clean my yard, I'd put some yard debris at the street for the yard truck, debris truck to pick up. It had left two or three things down there on the grass. I pick them up and I put them in my can, you know, for the next week. Well, when I leaned down, I picked them up. I stood back up. I was right at the street. This four by four, which is like a, a golf cart, stopped. And this man says to me, <clears throat> have you seen a small black dog? I've lost my dog. And I basically asked him, where does he live? What's the name of the dog? And how long has this dog been missing? A couple hours. And I thought I got the address of the street. And the man goes off. You know, he drives off and I walk to my house and I, and it comes to me, I, my Toby, I had a dog. I had a couple of dogs before then too, but Toby one time, he got loose from me and I called a few neighbors and man, they came right to help me. But I thought, well, gosh, what if I want to help this guy? Nobody, what if nobody's helping this guy find his dog? So I walk to my house. I then also, it comes to me, I, I helped start a neighborhood watch group that has 50, about 15 people in it. I texted, we are in a group text, like we all have a little group text. I texted them saying, this man's lost his little black dog, be on the lookout. I'm going out and driving in my car now. So I go get my car, drive on the street, and I head toward this street that, and I'm on purpose not giving you the address or the street because this all goes on the internet. But as I drive, I go slow and I have my windows down and I call this little dog's name out. And as I drive, I know where this street is. I drive down that, I go two streets to get to that street. I drive down that street and um, kind of don't find this house that I think that address, I got the wrong number. There's no number that I remember that, he, that I remembered on that street. But what I want to say is I went down there on that street so far. Then I talked to a woman at a mailbox, asked, told her about this dog, turned around, went back, went down this, came back down that street, went down another street, but then turned around from there. And, and the, there's no accidents is what I want to get to. All this was just perfectly timed. Holy Spirit had all this in order, <laughs> but notes to me. So I'm turning around, I get, I, I'm going back down the street. And the man said he lived on the second house at the end. But I stopped at the second house. Nobody was there. Nobody answered the door. There was no four by four, no man walking around. I get back in my car, go real slow on the street, yelling out the dog's name. And I see a vehicle behind me. And so I pull off by this driveway to let this vehicle go by. It pulls right up next to me, and this woman has the window down and says, "Are you, uh, are are you looking for a dog?" I said, "Yeah, I'm looking for a little black dog." And she says, "We found it," and she shows it to me. <laughs> and I go, "Oh, that okay?" Now she says, uh, "We've ran into somebody that says the man's in a four by four looking for his dog." I said, "Well, that's how I found out he, the dog was gone." I said. Let me get let's, let's, let me get your information so when I find him or you find him, we can talk to each other about who's got the dog. So if they get out of their car with the dog on a leash, and as soon as I see that dog, I realize where the dog lives because I've seen that dog. I walk that street. Twice I've seen that, uh, that dog. I didn't really remember the man, but I remember the dog. Don't you know, both of us parked right by this driveway with this dog lived I said he lives right here and we walked down that driveway there was a wall by this guy's garage and I just yelled out are you there and he came behind the wall to us come to find out these sweet neighbors had already been to the vet the dog had a chip in its neck but it wasn't registered so they couldn't find him so they were out driving around trying to find him so we told him about that so he could get that chip registered. I asked both couples, could I, or him, and they were a man and woman couple, could I take their names and numbers and share them among each other? And they said, yes, blah, blah. So I shared all that. So then, of course, he gets his dog. And then 
I've come to find out I visited with that lady one time out walking when I walked, blah, blah. But here's the big picture here is I can talk about that there's no accident or things are just perfect, right? Like they are. But this really drilled it home. This is Holy Spirit had it all figured out. If I didn't, if I did my part, which was to go out looking for the dog, I could have just went the hell back in my house and done nothing, right? Then whatever Holy Spirit would have another plan because we talk about that. There's mil, I think there's millions of choices. And so he's got them all lined up. But in the enlightened way of living, we're more, I realized what I had was empathy and compassion with the man. What if I had lost my dog and nobody was helping me find it? How would that be, right? So you're feeling how other people feel empathetically, not putting yourself in harm's way, but yet this mind training you're doing is opening all your heart. It's opening your heart. And that's what I lacked. Dzogchen Buddhism brought opening my heart to me because I had done A Course of Miracles and got, and people constantly say uh, things like, you can't fix anybody else. You, you can't do anybody else. And that just kind of like, got me like, well, I'm all right, but no, that's not the point. Yes, you can't, you can't fix anyone else, but you have empathy for the others because, and compassion, and how can I help them, even in the physical doings of the world, let alone having Christ, having Christ's vision or advanced forgiveness, thinking of them as spirit, right? That's our highest way of opening up uh, to our, our brothers is seeing them for the ultimate thing that they are, which is spirit and clear light. But we're all in this together. We're all in this planet together, um, in this universe together. And uh, we're here, believe it, in this wild 8 billion people when we're in a Zoom meeting that we've been drawn together by Holy Spirit to practice the course and whatever other truths you're practicing to, to wake up from this dream. It's just so beautiful. And that's this, um, and when you wake up, as you're waking up from the dream, you develop the powers. And we talked about those powers last week and the power, the four powers of reality, meaning heaven, nirvana, enlightened living is the power to be conscious, conscious. You're aware and alert, the power to be conscious, the power to feel ecstasy, the power to, we're not talking the bliss or or stuff of of man, ecstasy of God, this love of this loving God, ecstasy of this joy of, of being one, being in this union communion with God force. The power of will or desire. That will is there's only you know one will. The desire for this awakened living, this enlightenment not desires of the material world of money, fame, power. Although the Holy Spirit will always help you if you have a budget issue or something like that, just step back and, and, and ask Holy Spirit to help you, guide you what to do or say, because he does not forsake any of us. We, it's all interwoven. This physical world and the spiritual world are, are united because the God living Tao, the living clear light, the living force is animating all these images. It, it's it's just perfect. It's perfect. They're all animated by this God clear light. They're not separate. That's why Buddhism says form is emptiness and emptiness is form because in every form is this clear light animating everything. But yet you look like you got a form here. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form because they're interwoven, interconnected, interlocked like the yin and yang, the alpha and the omega, they're not separate. They're interwoven, interconnected, homogenous, like the holographic mandala principle. But anyway, so we got uh, we got power to be conscious, power to feel ecstasy, the power of will or desire, the power to know. And A Course in Miracles says, 
The whole purpose of the course is to get you to where you can have knowledge. Jesus actually says the purpose of the course is not knowledge, <laughs> but to get you to, to that point. <laughs> and then the power to know and then the power to act. So the power to act means you use this enlightened empathy, compassion, thinking to act in the world like the fire victims in Hawaii. Maybe you're contributing to that or doing prayers for them. Whatever it is, you know, act, the power to act. We're not bumps on logs. We're not, we're not zombies here. We're not just sleepwalkers. You know, we're animated with this joyous, loving God, clear light. Anyway, that's the powers. And then what happens in awakened mind, you get these five wisdoms, the mirror-like wisdom that clearly reflects whatever is without distortion and sees that the essence of everything is this clear light, this emptiness of God, clear light. Discriminating wisdom can make fine distinctions and discernments. See, as, as that man was by my driveway, this Christ mind was making distinctions and discernments at a different level than I would normally do and was helping me. And next wisdom is equalizing wisdom, uh, sees the oneness or equality of everything and recognizes the essence of everything is this clear light or emptiness, this God light. It registers the one taste or the essential oneness one taste means there's just this oneness, interwovenness and homogeneity of the myriad of things and their coherence within the holographic mandala principle. The mandala has all these circles in it. You've seen the mandala? That's just talking about all these images and projections that the God clear light mind, the son of God has used that energy to manifest out here the mandala principle. And in the center of the mandala is the still center turning point where the vertical axis of spirit meets the horizontal axis of the physical realm. And it's the still turning point called the groundless ground, the beginningless beginning where the Christ and the Buddha rests. And the clear light is manifesting these forms coming and going in the feelings. Then there's all accomplishing wisdom, which is resourceful and can do anything that needs to be done. That's all accomplishing wisdom. Spacious, all encompassing wisdom includes everything and excludes nothing. And that's called divine vision, Buddha vision. And that vision is displayed when you realize the true nature of your mind. That's what this whole Course of Miracles is wanting you to do is know thyself, know your true nature of your mind. When you connect fully with the source of awakened awareness, which is this God mind, the universal mind, God light spirit, that's the wisdom. Now, I was going to comment. I got, I'm going fast here because Christ's vision, we talked about Christ's vision was the, the thing about freedom. What happens in this enlightened living, your mind becomes free. And I put five examples where I Google about freedom and ask you, then I, based on the reading of it, I ask you a question. This first one is in text, text 14, chapter 14, section three, paragraph five, where Jesus says, um, well, I'll, I'll do my question. Can you remember everyone you offer healing to returns it? The cost of giving is receiving. This is what Jesus says in this section. The cost of giving is receiving. So as you give, you receive. But he says it in a little different way. And here's what Jesus says. The miracle teaches you that you have chosen guiltlessness, freedom, and joy. It is not a cause, but an effect. It is a natural result of choosing right, attesting to your happiness that comes from choosing to be free of guilt. Everyone you offer healing to returns it. Everyone you offer healing to, meaning think of them as spirit. Everyone you attack keeps it and cherishes it by holding it against you. Whether he does this or does it not will make no difference you will think he does. 
It is impossible to offer what you do not want without this penalty. So he's talking here, how you think of your brother, that's what the, you'll get the penalty back. It's not whatever you give, whatever you sow, you reap. The cost of giving is receiving. So what are you giving? What are you giving to your brothers? Next, I ask, can you remember to look past the bodies to the clear light of spirit that's there? Can you remember to fake it while making it? Here's what Holy Spirit Jesus says in chapter eight, section two. The Holy Spirit leads you steadily along the path of freedom. See, that's freedom from this imprisonment of ego, ego thoughts. Teaching you how to disregard or look beyond everything that would hold you back. See, the whole deal is you're looking beyond the body to the spirit that's there. Then he's using that word, that phrase again, look beyond everything that would hold you back. Then this next one is, can you believe that the purpose of the course is to free you from egoic thinking? And here's what Jesus says. When you have learned that your will is God's, you could no more will to be without him than he could will to be without you. This is freedom and joy. And then one of the, my favorite ones is, is that's, that was chapter eight, section two. Here's chapter 13, section 11. Can you realize your freedom lies in seeing you fight a war? This is Jesus talking between real and unreal powers. And this is, here's the exact quote. Yet if he could but realize, meaning us, the war is between real and unreal powers. He could look upon himself and see his freedom. So see, I've never, I never remember reading that. There's a war going on here. And what are you looking at? A war between real and unreal powers. So anyway, we're, that's what you're loose, letting, you're loosening the grip that ego has on you. Okay, now, so I, let's look at my notes because I, it takes me hours. I just love it. And I find these quotes that I normally wouldn't find. Now, in the email after my um, salutation, I put more quotes about wisdom and freedom that I found in the course when I was trying to pick some to, to, to discuss tonight. And maybe by you reading some of those, you may get an insight that could help you that could help you uh, in your awakening. But of course, Jesus says, the purpose of the whole course is to know thyself. That's chapter eight, section three. The goal of the curriculum, regardless of the teacher you choose, is know thyself. There's nothing else to seek. Everyone's looking for himself and for the power and glory he thinks he has lost. That's you're right. Everybody's asking, well, what am I? What's the deal? Well, what are you? You are this Christ light, this joyous, loving Christ light. And then um, that's constantly creating. And it's joyous. It's just totally joyous and loving. And somewhere in the course, or it could be Zochin, that says, in the beginning there was love. <laughs> In the end, there's love. In the middle, there's love. Because the whole thing really revolves around love. Loving our yourself, loving yourself, loving your brothers, and loving God. Because Jesus talks about the last thing that we really give up is our fear of God. So you're faking it while you're making it by saying, I love you, Father, Creator, God, whatever word you want to use. Let's see. Um, oh, nothing comes from outside your mind. And it's called big mind. That's a Suguki Roshi quote that I put in this email as well. Now, we're right at 754. Any. Um, oh, so I want to summarize. To awaken to your Christ nature, your Buddha nature. It means to awaken your your mind, open your heart, all these chakras, you're, you'll be up, you're, you're just radiating light, but you exemplify the qualities of Christ's teachings. And those teachings are, you know, non-attachment, 
loving, let's see, where are some of the lists here? Loving, kindness, wisdom, various powers. And you know, when I was preparing for this talk, I was rereading in this book, Buddha is as Buddha does. And there's there's a whole paragraph that explains about how, what it feels like to be awakened, enlightened. And I'm going to read this. This is from a woman, or it could be a man, called I-R-I-N-I -I, Rockwell. Oh, it's a woman, wrote a book called The Five Wisdom Energies. And it's similar to the five wisdoms that the Surya Das writes about, who's my friend in that wrote this book. Anyway, here's the paragraph. When we are fully present, see what I'm talking about is being in the now, 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 to be aware of thoughts and feelings, not in the past, not in the future, because then when I'm thinking that way, I'm not in the now, where I can get see what thought comes on that Holy Spirit could be given me. And I, 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 I guess when, but prior to thinking what enlightenment would be, thinking only Holy Spirit's going to give me holy thoughts. No, no. Holy Spirit's going to give you thoughts how you can live your day more joyously, more harmoniously, helping your neighbors, helping your family, whatever it is. It's, it's soaring while swooping. You're, you're, you're remembering your Christ nature, Buddha nature, God nature, while you're living the uh, surfing the waves, up and down ways of daily living. And Holy Spirit will guide you to help you being in the present. When we are fully present, we are receptive to the phenomenal world around us. See, that's what happens. You become awake. You're aware of the world that's around you. All these bodies and forms coming and going. You're, it's called awakened awareness. It's mindfulness. It's uh, you're present. You're authentically present in the moment not sleepwalking, opening to sense perceptions that what I was talking about, you're opening to your feelings, to your sight, smell, you're open to all these things. We become a sentient being, S-E-N-S-A-T-E, -E, being, embodied. See, that's what I'm talking about is you embody the Christ, Buddha, God, nature. You're living it. You exemplify it. And it's not holier than thou. You're living, that's why they call it chopping wood and, and carrying water. You're doing the same things you've always been doing, going to the grocery store, getting gas for your car, or whatever you're doing. But you're doing it awakened, enlightened. And when you're at the grocery store and you see these people in the store, everybody, a grocery cart that bangs yours, you open your heart like a rose or lotus. Or you say to them, you are spirit, silently, whole, pure, and innocent, all is forgiven and released. Or I love you. Those are all spiritual. In, you're integrating these spiritual truths into your daily life. That's where the rubber meets the road. We just can't spend an hour that day meditating or going to a Zoom meeting and then forget what the hell we're, what they were talking about. You're integrating it in. That's where it really transformed my life was having these sticky notes around and practicing it on the people on TV, the politicians, the grocery store, wherever I, the heck I went, my family. Anyway, being fully present when we look, we actually see. When we listen, we hear. When we smell and taste, we smell and taste. We savor it. When we touch, we truly feel. Connecting to the phenomenal world in this way is the key to contacting reality directly beyond concepts. We are able to experience the play of energies that is life itself. See, as you become in the now, present to this moment, you're in the now, 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 and then you're practicing these truths. You're awakening, you're awakening, and you're remembering, of course, they're, they're not bodies, they are free, for they're still as God has created them, and as you, but yet, you're living, you're dancing with life, you're not repressing your feelings, repressing your thoughts, denying what's, the Holy Spirit brings these thoughts up for us to look at, to be with, 
and see uh, and sit with, even if we need a therapist or a family member, somebody to talk to, because the, we have judgments and thoughts that Holy Spirit's bringing up out of the unconscious mind as we do our work, because for you to get an awakened mind, you it gets purified. It gets purified of these thoughts and concepts. Your heart gets purified from judgments of hate and dislike that we have on politicians or whatever that's happened. Blah blah. You all get it. But see, so there. It's not. I'm not. Con, I'm not saying the body's real. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it becomes awakened. You are awakened and enlightened. All the senses become heightened and enlightened when this Christ Buddha nature and Christ, your Christ Buddha nature uses your sense of touch to go help some neighbors. Maybe they're or or make some food and go take to an ill person. That sense of touch, sight, how you think of these people, taste and smell, enjoying a meal with somebody. I don't hearing how uh, enjoying a song hearing somebody, their sorrow and giving them a, soul, a, a shoulder to lean on versus, you know, giving them, a, 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 how, helping them with your hands. The, you're embodying this Christ, Buddha, God, nature. I mean, it is just a total, you become a total package. <laughs> I never do, I never thought about it this way. Anyway, thank you, sweeties, for coming out tonight. Holy Son of God, Leon. Now, while we go through here, y'all practice advanced forgiveness, and I'm going to open the floor to questions here too. Holy Son of God, Leon. Holy Son of God, Barbie. Holy Son of God, Edward. Holy Son of God, Nance. Holy Son of God, Angela. Holy Son of God, Gonzalo. Holy Son of God, Alvaro. Holy Son of God, Jerry. Holy Son of God, Julia. Holy Son of God, Glenda. Oh, and also a moment, a moment of holiness for the Hawaiian Islands. Bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. Oh my goodness. All those family members, the ones that, that are still not found or are missing, the sorrow, the suffering that will happen, that is happening, bless their hearts. Our hearts, our prayers go out to them. All sentient beings, all sufferings, the war zone, Ukraine, Russia, Sudan, Israel, Palestine, or Syria, Turkey, all those places, all these things that go on, bless, bless everybody, political turmoil in the United States, fires in Canada. Oh, I wrote this. Oh, before I think I want to write this. I want to read this. I mean, this is page 88 in that Buddha is Buddha book. This is where this Lama Suri Das says how he lives. This is how we can live. I've simply learned to do my best and not overly invested in outcomes to trust, to surrender, to let go and let be. It's how that holy man's living his life. But here's how he wrote on page 88. The world is filled, which we were just talking about, gain and loss, falsehood and, and honesty, reward and punishment, praise and criticism, pleasure and pain. The enlightened person is not ruled by exterior, external things. Enduring hardship means going through it, not waiting it out. We can learn to find the light even amidst the darkness. Through difficulties, pride is dissolved, karma purified, inner strength is furthered, and equanimity, equanimity attained. Hardships and obstacles become our friend. What we become conscious and mindful to the moment to moment awareness. We breathe, relax, and smile and center ourselves. But anyway, it just because you're enlightened and awakened doesn't mean pain and suffering isn't it's going to stop, or uh, war and violence or detrimental environment is not going to stop. It's how we're guided what to do or say in that, and our prayers and blessings to all sentient beings, release them, you know, from inner, outer secret obstacles so they can remember what they are, what their brothers are and what God is. Okay. Anyway, I open the floor to questions or thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Thank you. Yes, got all yeah, so I think Barbie had her hand up, right? Barbie had her hand up. 
Go ahead. I just wanted to ask a question, not about today. Just go ahead. And then Barbie. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Glenda. And it's so important. It's so, so such a time saver on this journey. If we can remember all or nothing, like we either include all images, all people, all thoughts under the light of God that we shine out there in this practice. If you don't, we don't totally believe it, it's practice. That we get used to putting everything under the light of God for illumination and not keeping some things to ourselves, keeping some judgments to certain people that we don't want to quite shine the light of innocence on, certain things, and ultimately it's ourself that we don't want to shine the light of innocence on because it all ends up with our own self-hatred that we project out conveniently in these things and people that we can't solve it out there. We can't solve it conveniently in the bad guy. You know, the, there's this social narrative going on now about narcissism. We can't solve it in the narcissism. We got to watch out for the narcissism. It's a big sneaky narrative by the ego to put the problem out there in those people. You need to be very aware of that. doesn't mean we can't learn from those examples. It doesn't mean we can't use those people as a, as a non-example for what we don't want in our mind. Absolutely. That's, that's called practice. But we need to be very mindful how the ego creates narratives about those people that we have to watch out for. And you know, we hear a lot about toxic people. Now, look out for the toxic people out there. Well, how many of us have ever made personal vicious attacks against anybody? You know, the list is full. Sign up. Sign up. But the list is already full. I've been doing it my whole life. And we need to be honest with ourselves about that to be able to cut through the BS and say, OK, where is all of these judgments coming from? All, it all ends back up in our minds. And so just be very mindful of the narratives about, quote unquote, those people, those things we need to watch out for. Again, they're, they're there to remind us of what we have in our mind. It's so important to, to save time uh, that we can all share on this journey about where we stumbled on our practice, you know, to where I withheld certain things and people from from shining the light of forgiveness on because I wanted to keep those judgments. It could be good. It could be, hey, I'm the hot body. I want to keep that one to myself. I want to make that better than the other bodies. You know, it could be something that we deem as good. Be very mindful of the narratives to sort of keep our special objects, um, either good or bad to ourselves, away from the light of God and, and make a practice, even if we don't believe it, to shine on everything equally. And eventually... It starts to deepen. It starts to deepen. And one more thing I wanted to share that was really powerful. I shared on the email uh, yesterday about I'm a big David Goggins fan. If anybody sees him on YouTube, motivational guy, uh, he speaks in very plain language. He said something in passing that really impacted about lowering himself beneath people. He said he he essentially caps his worldly success by lowering himself beneath people. That way you can truly understand them and truly see them. And I thought, wow, when we can lower our personal self, our ego self, our personality self beneath others, everything, everything, plans and everything, all thoughts, lower ourselves from a personal self, then we take the legs out of the ego because the ego is looking for any chance to jump on it and put itself above and make itself special. So I thought, wow, what a powerful gesture. Of course, Jesus exemplified that better than anybody to lower himself as a personal self. You know, it's not like we're lowly and unworthy. Of course, the ego wants to take it there, that if I need to be spiritual, I need to be lowly and beneath others. It's not that at all. It's simply cutting the legs out from under the ego, lowering one personal self, one egoic self, and blessing all from down here. I could truly shine the light from up there, but I have to lower the personal self first to be able to see clearly. And I thought that was a powerful gesture. I've never heard that. He's not even overtly what you call a spiritual teacher, but I think he speaks in very plain terms to what our true value is and what our true mission is. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Thank you so much. Well, that's a good way of putting it. I hadn't thought of that either. I, I share it different about leaning back, letting go of ego, but how he's doing it is to lower this self thought uh-huh yeah. uh, that yes and then the light can shine because i let yeah. go of that that 
superior thought, huh? Or yeah, whatever. It's, very it's, it's so subtle. It's so oh, yeah. subtle. You know yeah. how he goes like for any reason to elevate itself and be special and judge. And, and so I just thought that was a powerful, really helpful. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Of, of lowering oh, yeah. yourself in the worldly sense. And from there, we can truly bless and see. But um, yeah, so. Thank Thanks, you. Gonzalo. Thank you, Gonzalo, so much. People love hearing from you. Love hearing from everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Barbie. You can unmute. Now we're recording. We're recording. Okay. We're recording. No, this is okay. For the last past three days, everything I read, everything I was done, whatever. What is the spiritual ego? What? What's the spiritual ego? Ego, uh, no, that's two, there's two things it's either ego or Christ or Buddha. But the ego wants to make it more spirit. He wants to, I don't understand. I heard spiritual you're, ego a couple of times. Well, yeah, you're transcending egoic thought. Okay, e ego can't be helped. <laughs> It, it's it's its deal and so you're trans by transcending awakening you're choosing between the there's two thought systems the holy spirit teaches egoic thought system which is false not really there but we believe it we we're dreaming it's there and thought system holy spirit they're opposite they're Okay, so you're not you're not spiritualizing ego. No, you're transcending. You're re unveiling, unveiling your Christ nature by looking past these egoic thoughts and feelings of being separate from your brother or being a body, being a body, right? Believing the, the existence of the world believing this body is a separate self. There's all the things that Jesus in the course is getting you to become aware of how ego thinks. So no, you, you're just becoming aware of your Christ, Buddha, God, nature, Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. Does that help? It says, in the book, it says, don't build a spiritual ego. Who, what's saying that? What? I was reading in a book and I don't build, don't build a spiritual ego. So I, I was thinking like the ego is trying to pretend he's Holy Spirit. He's trying to. Could, mm -hmm. could be. You're reading in some other book other than the yeah. course. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, ego is vicious and, and all kinds of sneakiness, like Gonzalo calls it. Whatever it is. Yes. Ego is just two things, ego or Holy Spirit. So then, if the ego was trying to pretend that he's the Holy Spirit, could okay. oh yeah, okay. How could you discern the difference then? Well, that's the confusing part. It's how you feel. You just okay. do the best you can. Whenever okay. you get a thought, you're at you ask Holy Spirit guide me what to do or say, and you've prayed for and you need an answer on something. Usually, when you're brushing your teeth. Or, or doing dishes, you'll get a thought and you'll know that's the answer. Oh, okay. But if you're confused, if you feel confused, that means both voices have been talking and that means you don't do anything yet. If you, if you got time, you wait because you've heard both of them and they're saying different things. So that's why you feel confused or frustrated or depressed, blah, blah, blah. So you yeah. wait. Great. And then you just do that. That's why I read this. You do the best you can. This Holy One says, he sent this Surya Das. I've simply learned to do my best and not overly invested in outcomes to trust, to surrender, to let go and let be. So you do the best you can. You relax, you surrender, and then you, you do whatever you're guided to do. Then you're in the moment, in the now, this is this way of living, and you adjust and make another action or thought. It's trying to be spontaneous and present to whatever's going on now, in that moment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very, That it's a way of living. That's what you're developing. 
is how you feel, your sense of how you feel. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good, Barbie. Very good. Angela, uh, uh, you got something you want? Uh-huh, that helped. Yeah, because see, with the dog deal, it became obvious to me I was to go help this person. I wasn't confused. But now if I had been, then I then I would wait or maybe wouldn't have gone. <laughs> I don't know. See, that didn't happen, but I don't know. Any other thoughts or comments before I stop recording? Okay, and each took your time and did your forgiveness work on each person here. Okay, thank you, thank you. Today is August 22nd, 2023. For those, uh, my YouTube channel is Glenda Carlin, A Course of Miracles YouTube channel, where I'll uh, upload this video, usually within a day or two after the talk. Thank you, thank you for coming out tonight, you all. I'm going to...